530. I'm Colin Mayfield and I'm Vanessa Rufus. Today is the final day of Black Maternal Health Week, yeah. and this is a week aimed at raising awareness about racial disparities in pregnancy related outcomes in the US. WCNC Charlotte's Kia Murray sat down with one Charlotte woman to share her story about this. Jessica Rushing is a mom of three healthy babies. The Charlotte woman remembers giving birth to her last daughter, Sonoma, about a year ago. A nurse had come in to take my blood and she was struggling to get blood out. And she was like, you know what? That's enough. We'll just, you know, I'm tired of poking and prodding at you. But without follow up, Rushing says she left the hospital not quite feeling herself. It just so happens there's a midwife in her husband's friend group who asked a few more questions. And she said, they shouldn't have released you from the hospital. She's like, I've never seen levels this low. Thankfully, Rushing and Sonoma are healthy today. However, that's not the story for many black women, both across the country and the Carolinas. Data from South Carolina's health department shows infant mortality rose 12%, but that same data shows black infants continue to suffer disproportionately, dying at a rate nearly two and a half times that of white infants. And North Carolina's Foundation for Health Leadership and Innovation found black women are nearly three times more likely than white women to die while pregnant or within the first year of childbirth. And part of the problem is rooted in what happens in hospital rooms. We have seen it play out racially in that black women may or may not have those their concerns listened to um, or receive the same treatment as white women. Dr. Pam Oliver with Novant Health breaks down what's called implicit bias. In healthcare, that would show up as me looking at a um, two women who have a very similar condition. And whether I realize I'm doing it or not, I may treat, listen to, respond to those women in a different way. A different way that could lead to misdiagnosis and less care. Still, there's yet another factor at play. So it's a change in your body related to the chronic stress that's tied to racism. The weathering effect theory studied by the National Library of Medicine found failing health due to being exposed to race related stress may impact black Americans most. We have to break down some of the barriers that prevent women from taking care of themselves, put in place processes and follow those to make sure we're responding to women's concerns and needs. So we have to advocate for um, changes in our community that support um, women who may need more. As for rushing, she's done having kids, but she has this advice for black women hoping to be moms one day. Make sure you have the tough conversations with your doctors, with your midwives, with your nurses, and just say, I know how the stats look. I'm not going to be a statistic. So take care of me. Kia Murray, WCNC Charlotte. Now, Dr. Oliver with Novon Health adds that hospitals are working to be part of the solution, too. They are educating on implicit bias and also trying to fine tune processes and also look at the data just to better understand disparities in hopes of eliminating them.